Hello, I'm Alex the Rambler and I would like to welcome you to the inaugural video of A Ramble Throughout History. A series where you take a stroll through the past to find the most weird, wonderful and surprising tales of human triumph and tragedy. So make sure to comment, like and subscribe for more A Ramble Through History and let's get straight into this. Now most of you will probably know me from my masterful playing of the World War II map-based strategy game Hearts of Iron 4, so I thought starting our historical journey in the middle of the technological and intelligence race of World War II would be a fitting start. To set the scene, the year is 1943 and World War II has dragged on for four long, bloody, costly years. The tide of battle is starting to tip in the Allied forces' favour and the war leaders are looking to press any advantage they might have in a grip to weaken the Axis. With Germany on the back foot and Hitler in poor health, he becomes increasingly erratic and paranoid. He has taken sole command of his troops and is issuing inflexible and out-of-touch orders to his front lines. He seems to be committing wholeheartedly to his dictum, Germany shall either be a world power or not be at all. To try and save Germany from the total destruction, sue for peace while they still could, a resistance within the Nazi party formed to try and wrest political control away from Hitler. Several assassination attempts were planned and executed, though this is hardly new to Hitler, people have been trying to kill him since 1932 without any luck. Yes! I am invincible! If one of these attempts had in fact succeeded, it would have saved the Allies the effort of brainstorming increasingly more creative ways of targeting Axis troops and offing the tyrannical Fuhrer. One idea was to equip fighter aircraft with long sharp blades that could be used to sever parachute cords, causing the airmen trying to bail to safely plunge to their deaths instead. I imagine at some point in the brainstorming act, an actual pilot pointed out that asking them to try and cut individual parachute cords during a dogfight was tantamount to asking them to perform surgery in midair. Not very effective. Not to worry though, in the event of a dogfight, Allied forces can release a cloud of chloroform from, uh, or ether, from their bombers, so that pursuing enemy fighter pilots would fly into cloud and get knocked unconscious and crash. That's not gonna work. One of the wild ideas for targeting Axis land troops en masse included dropping bombs filled with molasses in front of the advancing troops so their boots and wheels would get stuck and they couldn't advance. I mean, if you're going to bomb them with something, uh, <laughs> I would think you'd want to bomb them with, you know, a bomb. But if you're not going to drop bombs on them, not to worry. There are other options. Maybe smother them in coils of barbed wire dropped from the sky, or millions of poisonous steaks. Speaking of poison, someone thought of poisoning thousands and thousands of tons of cabbages and dropping them over enemy fields to wipe out their farm animals. The resulting famine it might bring Germany to its knees, and hey, Starving all the German civilians isn't a war crime if the Geneva Conventions hadn't even been uh, adopted yet, right? And just in case the other Axis nations were feeling left out, there were plots to target fascist Italy and Imperial Japan too. Once Italy joined the war, there was a suggestion to drop huge amounts of bombs into the mouth of Mount Vesuvius, causing it to release a pyroclast and flood of mountain lava across southern Italy. There was even a plan to harness nuclear power in a bomb that when dropped over populated cities in Japan could vaporize hundreds of thousands of unarmed civilians, but that's just crazy. They did actually do that one. I guess that highlights the need to protect the home front. There were some wild ideas up here too. There was a scheme to light up the whole of southern England with tens of thousands of searchlights that incoming enemy bombers could be easily seen at night. The very best proposed homeland protection idea, which I'm sure would have no long-term devastating effects to Britain's ecosystem, was to cover Britain's rivers and lakes with oil or coal dust to prevent reflections off the water in order to rob the attacking German pilots of navigational markers during the Blitz. This idea actually progressed to trials, however the first test failed to dole down the water and instead just covered the technicians with a thick layer of sticky black oil. Brilliant. All these ideas were brainstormed to respond to an ongoing war, but if, what if the war could be stopped in its tracks? The absolute best idea that could come off the Allies' collective drawing board was a proposed plan that would target the Fuhrer himself. Perhaps the only thing needed to curb Hitler's murderous impulses to end the war was a feminine touch. The Allies proposed to dose Hitler's carrot with estrogen and turn him into a woman. As you do. 
To understand where this glorious idea came from, we have to look at the US Office of Strategic Services, the precursor to the CIA. In 1943, this American intelligence agency commissioned psychiatric profiles of Hitler from Henry Murray, who was a psychologist at Harvard University, and a separate research team led by Walter Charles Langer. The thinking went, if they understood Hitler's personality and how his mind worked, then the Allies could outmaneuver him. Langer submitted his team's secret report titled a psychiatric study of Hitler, which was based on information gathered from interviews of people the Americans had access to, who knew Hitler personally, and many readings of Hitler's manifesto Mein Kampf. They came to the conclusion that Hitler was a hysterical and neurotic sociopath bordering on schizophrenia. Langer describes two Hitler personality types inhabiting the same mind. One is soft and sentimental, the vegetarian painter, the other hard and cruel, the Führer. The Führer personality is a grossly exaggerated and distorted concept of masculinity to cover up Hitler's weaknesses and inadequacies. These included sexual inadequacy, perhaps impotence, a frail body, and softness, sometimes described as effeminate. His early failures as an aspiring artist and his gnawing suspicion that his real grandfather was Jewish. If you would like to read more about Langer's analysis of Hitler as weak, puny, and a bully, then you're in luck! His report was eventually declassified and published as the book The Mind of Adolf Hitler in 1972. Henry Murray's report, Analysis of the Personality of Adolf Hitler, came to similar conclusions. In addition to hysteria, Hitler showed all the classic symptoms of schizophrenia, hypersensitivity, panic attacks, irrational jealousy, omnipotence fantasies and delusions of grandeur, belief in a mission from God, and extreme paranoia. Langer and Murray both came to the conclusion that perched between hysteria and schizophrenia, Hitler would eventually lose faith in himself and his destiny, and then commit suicide. Interestingly, the hysteria Hitler was diagnosed with has long been seen as a woman's only disorder. In effect, it was a catch-all diagnosis for all the things male doctors found mysterious about women. The treatment for hysteria used to be a uterine massage and eventually led to the creation of the vibrator to stimulate a woman's... Uh, that's a story for another time, I think. Anyways. Based on these psychiatric profiles that the OSS determined that Hitler was somewhere in the middle of the male-female gender spectrum, so logically, the Allies could tip him onto the female part of the spectrum. A feminised Hitler would be naturally less aggressive and genocidal, and maybe the loss of his iconic moustache and commanding voice and the appearance of Big Roost would cause him to lose confidence in himself and commit suicide, as the OSS reports suggest how to accomplish this. In the 1940s, groundbreaking research was starting to understand the importance of sex hormones, estrogen for women and testosterone for men, and sex therapy trials were starting in London. Armed with this knowledge, the plan was clear. The Allies needed to bribe Hitler's gardener and inject estrogen into his carrots. Long-term ingestion of the dosed vegetables would have a feminising effect but would be slow and subtle enough to be undetectable to Hitler. His food tasters would likewise be unaware because estrogen is tasteless and multiple tasters were used so they would not exhibit the same feminising symptoms Hitler would have. Ultimately, this plan was scrapped though, likely due to the number of ways it could go wrong. Now, what if the gardener couldn't be bribed? Or what if he accepted the bribe but didn't inject the carrots with estrogen? And what if the food taster did notice something weird? What if Hitler went into a strop and refused to eat his carrots like a good little genocide dictator? There were just too many variables to make the plan worth it. So the wildest ally war ending idea ultimately wasn't attempted, but it is fun to wonder what if it had been attempted and what if it had worked? Thank you for so much for listening to my first ramble through history. If you like what you heard and want to do a deeper dive on the topic, I've left a link to the list of my sources in the description. And if you liked the video, please leave a comment and a like. And if you want more historical ramblings, please subscribe. So thanks again for tuning in to the first Ramble Through History. I'll see you again another time. Ta-ta!